Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. If you take a look at certain GitLab URLs, you might notice a hyphen root. So the URL might have something like slash hyphen slash. And I saw this the other day and I was very curious as to, you know, what's, what's going on here? Why do they need that? And it turns out it solves a very, very common problem in web design, web development. So in this video, we're gonna be having a look at what that problem is, how they've solved it. And we're gonna have a look at some practical examples with some code. So let's get right into it. So the first thing I'll point you towards is this GitLab issue. So this is kind of written in a bit of a blog post style and it just goes over what the issue is um, and how they introduced it and how they're solving it with this kind of hyphen root. So we're just gonna go over this very high level to have a look at what the issue is and then we can go into some code samples. So if we start off with the example they have here, which is just, let's visit this URL, this GitLab URL, which has the host name and it has two segments as part of the URL. GitLab sees that you've requested uh, GitLab FOSS the project uh, within the GitLab org, the organization or the group here. And this is easy to identify and this is easy to kind of create a pattern for. And in fact, I'll just show you here. So if I close this a bit, you can see, let's ignore the rest of this for now, but you can see here, you might have something that looks like this, right? Slash group slash project. You know that anything visiting uh, a, a URL like this is gonna be the project page that belongs to that group, right? So immediately though, there is an issue here, which they've not kind of alluded to here. They, they allude to it later on, which is how do you differentiate between a project and your existing pages. So if you just look at the uh, pattern just above here, you have slash group slash settings. So you have the settings page of the group, and then just below it here, you have the project page. So immediately you can kind of start to see the, the difficulty that arises here. How do you know whether they're visiting the settings page of the group or the project? And that, that isn't even starting to get into what if they try to name their project settings, of course, you might have business logic to, to prevent keywords, but that's not very scalable. So you can kind of start to see where the issue starts to arrive. And in GitLab's case, it's actually even more complicated than that. So let's, let's read on here. In their case, they're actually introducing subgroups. So if we look at uh, this URL over here, and you have the, the group here, GitLab org, and then they have a subgroup creator pairing, and then you have uh, the issues. Now, there's really no way to know whether you're on a page, a project, or uh, a group. And in this case, they've basically taken the hit and said, look, we're gonna do at least one database query to find out if the final uh, route here is a project or a subgroup. But there still is the issue of, is it a page or not? And this is basically what the hyphen root is solving. By adding the hyphen root here, they've basically added a separator to say, hey, everything before that hyphen root is gonna be either a project or a subgroup. So we still need to do the database call there, just the one. But we know that everything after that is gonna be a page that we've defined. So this of course allows users to create any project and any group or subgroup with any name. And it's never gonna conflict with the internal pages because it's always gonna come before the hyphen root. So there are a few examples down here. I won't go into these examples here because I've got my own, but I definitely recommend reading this. And if we don't understand it, yeah, let's, let's jump right into the code. So I've got a very basic project here. It's just the one file. Uh, this is just done in Dino. And all this is doing is it's creating a list of paths, as we can see here. So we have four paths, and this is kind of modeling the, the GitLab structure that they have there. So we have a, a, a page, a group page, we have a group settings page, which is group slash settings, project page, project settings. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take in an input. So it's gonna look something like this. I'm just running it with a URL. Doesn't matter what the host name is. All we're really focused on is the path name. And it's just gonna try filter all the, um, it's gonna filter all the paths. And then it's just gonna basically put out the output. What does it match and what are the groups? So if I run that there, it's gonna say, hey, I've matched the group page here. So that's the page group, which is the top one. And this is what I've substituted. So uh, inside here is taking the group variable name and it's called that YouTube, a lot of groups here, but yeah, that's, that's fine. So this is what we're gonna be doing to test. So in this case, we can see it's quite simple, right? In the very first case, we can see very simple, we know that we're accessing a group. And if we go YouTube slash uh, Ridwan, we know again, we're, we're accessing a project. Now, the question that we said earlier on is what happens if you do settings? So you can see immediately if I go to settings, it doesn't know which one to pick. There's, it returns two pages. So this could be the group settings or it could be the project settings. So that's the, the kind of initial initial issue, which you can, there's ways to maybe try to get around that, but nothing really deterministic. Now, the second part of this, which is what they've done, is they've basically gone, all right, well, we're gonna take all our groups, one, two, three, four, and we're just gonna add slash uh, subgroup here. So it's gonna be 
I guess it will be a, a colon here. So it will be subgroups and it could be any number of subgroups. So we're just gonna add the asterisk here. Note here that I am using the URL pattern. This is an experimental uh, thing. So I, I definitely wouldn't recommend using it in production, but I'm just playing around with it here. Anyways, so we're in subgroups here and the star here, the wildcard just indicates it could be zero or many subgroups. So let's go ahead and save this and let's just start rerunning that same, well, let's just start by rerunning that same query as last time, right? So here we had, last time we had two matches. You can see immediately we have three matches now. So it could still be a group with a subgroup of settings. So you can see the YouTube group and the subgroup of settings. It could be the group settings for the YouTube group or it could be the settings project. So you've named your project settings within a YouTube group. You can see this is already again a bit confusing. And now imagine you had uh, YouTube Redwan slash settings here, and we scroll down, we're gonna see just matches everything. It has no idea, it could be the group with this uh, subgroups, it could be the group settings for the, the Redwan subgroup, it could be the project called settings within a subgroup, within a group, so on, so forth. So you can just see that there's no way of really identifying which is internal pages or dynamic routes or groups or projects or anything, right? So if we clear all that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the code a tiny bit, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to anything that's an internal page and we're just gonna add hyphen slash, just like that, same down here. Instead of just slash settings, it's gonna be hyphen slash. So what we've done here implicitly is we've basically identified these two routes as being kind of our internal pages or you know non-dynamic pages. So now we can update the code slightly to differentiate between these two paths. So if we just scroll down here and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go uh, page path. So let's just call it page path. And we're gonna take our paths and we're gonna filter um, based off of, it's not gonna do any matching. We're just gonna filter on the pattern. We're gonna take the path name for the pattern, which is this string. And we're just gonna say, this is just a naive implementation. We're just gonna say, look, if you have a slash hyphen slash, then we know that you're a page, right? Simple as that. And if you don't have that, so if we go to, uh, let's call this user paths, and this is just gonna be the opposite basically. So page paths have a slash, hyphen slash user paths don't, right? So now we can just say, all right, if the URL that you've given me, so let's just do uh, paths to search. So if the URL includes uh, the hyphen root, let's just show the page path. Otherwise let's show the user path and we can just copy and paste that here instead, right? So now we're just gonna search depending on whether they have the, the, the hyphen or not. So if we now run the exact same one that was matching all four in the last uh, the last command, we can see immediately it's just returning the two, right? Because we don't have the hyphen root, it just knows there's no way this is uh, one of our pages. This is gonna be one of the, the user defined pages. So it's either gonna be a group or a project. So we do a database query and we can figure that one out nice and simple. And if we want to change it to a user page, we're just gonna add that hyphen root, right? So it's a hyphen there separator and we hit enter here. And then it's gonna say, well, now we know that it's a settings page. So it's got to be either the group settings or the project settings. So we still need to do that database, uh, the database call. We're gonna always have to do that, I think, because of the nature of the subgroups, it can be n, any number. Um, but at least now we're able to differentiate between the settings and we can kind of reason about that and uh, I guess make it a bit easier to work with. So that's everything I wanted to cover there. Hopefully the examples there and going through the GitLab issue illustrates the, the problem that's being solved here and hopefully shows you how you might solve it for your own project. Of course, it doesn't have to be a hyphen root. You could use anything you want. That's just what they've gone for uh, in GitLab. And yeah, I found this pretty interesting. So I just thought I'd share it with you guys. Uh, hopefully you found it interesting too. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Have a good day and I will see you in the next one.